It's been a little while since I've made a woven wall hanging and today I really wanna make one. What I love most about working with my own two hands and making things and weaving things is that it often makes me feel a lot more grounded and it kind of gets me out of my head and gives me that sense of tangible accomplishment that I am so often craving in our digital world. Oh, if I'm being totally honest, I'm feeling stressed and anxious and overwhelmed and just like general blah today. And normally when I feel this way, I just don't film. I wait until I'm happier and more energetic and can be, you know, what it feels like I need to be on camera. And so today I'm gonna weave anyway. And I thought maybe it would be interesting to see how I feel at the end of this and see if it's gotten better. So let's weave. So I came down this, to the studio today and lo and behold, I already had a loom with a warp with twining and plain weave on it. And I was like, my overwhelmed heart is feeling very happy about that today. I just need to add some cardstock in because I always like something to beat down onto. So we're just gonna add that in and I already feel like I'm so much further ahead on this. So thank you, Past Janelle. I appreciate it. Normally I don't do this, but I'm gonna tuck in some ends right off the bat because tucking in ends is honestly my least favorite part. And since I know I for sure won't be taking this base work out, I'm gonna go ahead and do that now so it feels like I'm a little bit ahead of the game. And for your reference, this is a four ends per inch loom. I have four eight cotton warp string on it and I used applied yarn um, Lion Brand Woolies Thick and Quick to do a twining stitch and three rows of plain weave. Now is the time where decisions need to happen, which is usually the part that starts to overwhelm me the most. So I'm thinking it's fall. Fall colors are my favorite and it's been, I, I've like been trying to branch out a lot of, a little bit and not like only use neutrals and fall colors. But today, um, since this is an effort to be therapeutic for me, I'm gonna use fall colors and it's gonna be good. Now, as far as the design goes, I'm kind of thinking I want to do stripes because this is gonna sound so dorky, but it's kind of one of those things I feel like right now where my mind feels like it's being pulled in so many different directions, which is the overwhelm. But maybe my weaving doesn't have to be chaotic. So I'm kind of thinking stripes, and I just realized I still haven't even put fringe on this piece yet. But I'm thinking stripes because it feels organized, <laughs> and I feel like my brain just needs that today. So I'm gonna put some fringe on this baby. This is seven millimeter cotton rope and I'm gonna use a second loom and I'm just going to use it kind of on the width wise to create my fringe and I'm just doing one strand of fringe per section. Again, just in an effort to keep this simple and satisfying and fun. I guess I should probably count how many I need though. 16. All right. Now I'm going to try to not cut through more than one layer at a time. Ugh. That rope is really thick. I have these silk ribbons in some really pretty fall colors. Oh, here's a smaller bunch of the gold. That stuff is so hairy though. There's also this slightly more orangey color, which is really nice. I don't even know if I've woven with these yet. It's wool, but it's like thick and thin spun and it's very like felted as well. So that might be cute. Okay. This is already like so many things. <laughs> oh no. I think I need some 
Merino wool roving, maybe some cotton rope too. Uh, I don't know. Oh, I also have this. Ooh, these two colors together are really, really nice. And this one. Okay, I really like that. Let's use that as a direction. This one's maybe too orange. What else would look good with those? And how many materials do I really need? Because I could go a little bit overboard sometimes. I'm not feeling very uh, confident about this. I think I need to just start because it's just so, there's just so much going on on this table now that I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna begin with this green. Literally just because I really like it. And so, <laughs> I'm hoping that'll be a good idea. <laughs> do I wanna start this off with like this? I think I'm gonna do some like double sumac, which is when, well that's just gonna hang out there so I can tuck it in later. But like, I like to do it, am I gonna do it on every string? I think I'm gonna do it on every string or every two strings. So I take two strings and you can see that there's like two pieces here. So I open them up, I reach under the two strings, I pass through the rest of the yarn, pull the tail through, and when I tighten it up, it's like double sumac. Oh, this is so interesting because it's thick and thin. So it's like not gonna be the most, obviously, even sumac stitch. It's gonna probably create a slight curve on me, which will hopefully be fine. Now, do I wanna go back again? I actually think I do. Okay. I feel like that created some interesting texture. Like it's because it's like uneven yarn, it's just uneven when you stitch it too. And I'm kind of into that. What is next? Yeah, maybe like a little bit of this. Is that enough contrast? Should I go for like the orange next? Or do I need more texture first? I mean, I do love those colors together. This one is like an over two, under two. And then I like to pull loops everywhere that the wool is going over the warp strings and it creates these little bubbles and they're so cute. And I really like that. And then maybe some of this brown. Oh, that's kind of nice. Or do I want to go with a little bit of white at this point? Should there be any white? Maybe I should challenge myself to just like not use white for once. It's like my go-to. And the other question is, would this look better? You know, this orange, actually I think that would look okay. And I'm gonna do some plain weave at this point because I've done everything with sort of chunkier stitches and I wanna make sure that there's some structure in there so that things don't go too loopy on me. I'm feeling like there's not a lot of like contrast between the colors right now. So I'm thinking of maybe going in with this like dark brownish gray. Next, do I love this? Do I hate this? <laughs> it's always the question. I'm gonna do this color. I'm not gonna do the knotting that happens right on the warp. I'm gonna do the knotting that happens before it goes on the warp. So all I do is like I take some nice long strands and then I literally start tying overhand knots into it. And the beauty of this is that they don't have to be spaced out perfectly. They don't have to be even, um, you can do it thick, you can do it thin. It really, really doesn't matter. It just still looks really cool. And it looks like a really organic texture because it's sort of uneven. Probably three strands would have been a little bit better, but you know what, here we are. We're doing two. So it's happening. 
then with this super chunky knotting, I do plain weave, but I do it over two, under two, because it's a little bit chunkier. And what I want is for the knots to be able to actually like show their texture and not get sort of squished into the back. So let's see, I just realized now I should have knotted all the way to the end. And I like to make sure that the knots are like sitting to the forefront of the piece so that they're not getting tucked away in the back and then you don't even get to see the texture. Not quite as textured as I was hoping. I'm a little worried that this is looking like, it doesn't look too muddy. Like would it look better if I snuck just a little bit of white in there? Hmm. Let's just try it. Let's try it. It's what I'm always telling you. So let me take my own advice. I'm gonna push this out of my way and just weave this in over two, under two. And I'm not even gonna create any loops or anything. I'm just hoping that this little bit of white will sort of brighten things up just a touch so that it doesn't feel so, like I said, it was like starting to feel a little muddy. Does that help? I think it does help. And I mean, then we're sort of bringing in what's going on here with the off-white. And it really makes, you know, when, when when this orange and this brown are next to each other, it kind of like makes them both look muddier than they are. And then I guess, I guess this one is like liter literally the color of mud kind of so. I don't know, but the white is helping and it's just a little bit, just a little, little tiny bit in there to sort of give it a lift and some contrast. Okay, now I need, to, what do I need? I can go back and bring in some of that green again because something I like to do is sort of like bring in the design concepts of like repeat and balance to sort of balance it. But is that where I want to take this? I could go in with just like a different green too. Something that contrasts the the other green. I don't mind that. And then I need to go in with more plain weave after this because it's getting a little unstructured again. I definitely need to bring the Sumac Dutch back in. Could I bring it in here? Oh, that might work. I wanna start sort of repeating colors because otherwise this is gonna feel so all over the place. Where am I going next? I just wanna know if I should come back in with that Sumac stitch now, but now it's feeling like it's been a while since there's been sort of that orangey color. So do I go in with this? and do sumac. This is feeling like really, it feels like a lot. <laughs> so that's why I'm like, do I wanna sort of bring this in first and then perhaps go back in with this after? The other option is I could start repeating itself opposite and start doing like going backwards and repeating creating like a reflection kind of look. So then it would be this, then this, then this, and then this. How do we feel about that? But the question is like, do I want it that like perfect? Or do I want it like a little bit more organic looking than that? I didn't even show the orange. 
it would bring some like cohesion to it because it is like, there's a lot going on right now. Now, if I repeat this, and this is gonna go here. That would, that would be about right. I think I'm gonna try it. And I'm, I'm well aware I just said I should put in some more structure before I keep going and now I'm not doing that. So uh, we'll see, we'll see how that actually turns out. So now we're back to this over to under to bubble sort of texture with the gold. And I'm just like, I'm trying to decide if I like this. Oh boy. And actually I'm looking at this and I'm like, would it look better if we just got rid of the gold? What if we did, hear me out. What if we did a blue? <gasps> Is that better? And is this even better? So this is like a more, like a slightly more grayish blue. Ooh, let's set that there. And let's set this here. Huh. Let's try it on this end since I don't have to like unweave anything except for that to do that. Let's just see what this looks like. Because now I'm looking at this and I'm like, Am I just like a boarding on the fall colors? Oh, yes. There's, you know what it is? I think it's this corally orange that I was questioning earlier. I don't think it goes that well with the gold, but against this blue, hello? I think that's really pretty. So this is like totally taking on a mind of its own. Now, do we like it with the green? I actually do think it looks pretty with the green. So, how do we do this? Like, how do we take, you know, we're, we're not gonna take all this out to get to here. So here's what I'm going to do. I am going to carefully start kind of just pushing up. This is kind of a nightmare. Oh, I hate doing this. I'm just pushing up my previous rows. I'm gonna take this out. Let's get all this stuff out of the way. Okay, we're gonna take that out and we're gonna carefully put this in instead. And then we're gonna have to go with the task of pushing everything back down, but being really careful that we don't like super mess up all our tension and everything that's in there. How do we feel? How do we? I feel a lot better about that. I feel like it just goes better. So now I need to add the blue up top. It's funny because this is a color combination I don't think I ever would have just like come up with just on my own accord. So that's interesting, I guess. Okay, so now all we have left is a couple rows of sumac with this green. Now to finish the top of this, I'm just gonna do a twining stitch at the very top with this three millimeter cotton because I just wanna make sure that the, the weaving itself isn't gonna shift on me too much once it gets off the loom. Now it's time for all of the finishing. So I'm gonna flip this over and I always like to start with the wool roving when I'm tucking ends in because it's usually bulky and in the way. I can confirm at this point I am feeling significantly more just like chill and like myself and like I don't remember why I was feeling so anxious and um, overwhelmed. I feel like there's so much to be said about action, you know, giving you more clarity. And in this case, I feel like that's true in the sense that like, I just feel like my head is more clear now that I've 
you know, had the, I had enough in me today to just start. And starting is always the hardest part about everything. And then once I got started, I remembered why this makes me feel good. It's just like the motions of weaving are so therapeutic. Focusing on my mind, focusing my mind on something other than what all the different things that I was feeling anxious about and overwhelmed with, it just like helped me become a lot more present. And I'm just feeling like my heart isn't racing anymore. I'm not feeling blah anymore. I'm feeling really excited about just this color palette that I accidentally came up with. Like, I love when stuff like that happens where you're just like, I never, I never would have just thought of this otherwise. And even this entire piece, if I hadn't sat down today to do this, this piece wouldn't exist because every day, you know, you feel differently about maybe the materials and stitches and whatnot you wanna use. And so, yeah, it just feels really good to have in some ways, forced myself to just come do this. If you have one of our spruce and linen looms, I just wanna give you a little tip here. If your warp is really tight and it's difficult to do what I'm doing, but like see how it's, it's really not that hard. What I'm doing is I'm pulling up on the warp string and then I'm just slipping it over and it's not very tight. If your warp is really tight, just undo the screws, take off the notch bar and just slip it off because if it's too tight, what can happen is the notches can break if you are really reaming on them because I mean it is, you know, it's not super, super thick wood. So you just want to be really careful with that. Now let's get this onto the dowel. Are we liking the way everything's sitting? I think so. I really hope this dowel isn't too big. Is it gonna fit? Is it gonna work? Is it gonna work? Okay, thank God. <laughs> I was gonna be really bummed out if this dowel was too thick because I just pre-cut it for this piece and I really didn't want to have to go cut another one. I did it and I feel so much better. Like I feel like an, I feel like I had a cup of coffee. Like doing this made me feel like I have a cup had a cup of coffee without like the jitteriness and like very quickly fading energy that comes along with coffee, um, which I'm all here for too. But this just feels so good. I came up with a design I haven't done before. I came up with a color palette that I never would have thought of. Like if this was totally accidental and I really like it. Like it feels like it's something a little bit different and I'm totally here for that. If you enjoyed this video, check out our Stitch Library playlist. It has pretty much every stitch I used in this piece, plus tons more.